In a little lab in the heart of Silicon Valley, a team of engineering heavyweights is trying to solve a tricky technical puzzle. The Valley veterans are trying to build tools that could brighten the clouds. If they succeed, the hope is that humankind could reflect more heat back into space, wielding clouds as shields against global warming. Armand Nukermans, a serial inventor from Belgium, is spearheading the effort, driven by a concern that the world could be headed for humanitarian and ecological disasters. You know, people 10 years ago had said this is totally wacky to start thinking about doing this, but in the present situation, people now start really a little bit more concerned. It could give us some time if, if it really becomes catastrophic. Our approach is just to take salt water and get it really, really hot. And if you take this gas and let it come out of a nozzle really fast, both the steam and the salt particles will go up into the cloud. And when they condense moisture on them and grow, then they start to become very efficient mirrors, so to speak. And then they start to show a real cloud whitening effect. There are few full-throated advocates of cloud brightening and similar so-called geoengineering techniques. But some climate scientists have begun to study the potential effectiveness and possible side effects of these strategies in case a rapidly warming world necessitates an option of last resort. Now there are different um, estimates about how effective these, this would be, but this cloud whitening approach could offset most or even all of the climate change that might occur this century. One of the places they would work in is off the coast of California and Baja California. But other scientists and many environmentalists argue that geoengineering is a very dangerous road to go down. Technologies that we're potentially talking about pose extremely serious risks, even assuming that they can be uh, effective it may radically alter precipitation patterns in certain parts of the world. For example, in the Amazon, where the precipitation is critical for the terrestrial species and the trees themselves to thrive. I don't think we can potentially take geoengineering off the table. At the same time, I think we need to set an extremely high bar because of the negative implications I talked about, and also because of the what we call the potential moral hazard. If people believe that there is a quick fix, then they may take their foot off of the pedal in terms of trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The whole planet is highly interconnected. Anything that's done anywhere will affect places far away. The question is how big are these effects and how reversible are they? I think the cloud whitening, the distant effects probably are not going to be that huge and Presumably if they stop within a few weeks, things would be pretty much back to normal. Best thing to do would be to dramatically cut our greenhouse gas emissions now. That's not the trajectory that we're on. And we'd have to think of, well, what can we do if real catastrophe happens? I want to make it very clear that we do not in any way advocate the application of this technology. We have no replacement for any of the other stuff that we should do. But we certainly do think that these technologies should be researched. If, if we really have to use it, it may give us a, maybe a few decades, but the good and the bad needs to still need to be separated and figured out. We don't know where the balance will, will actually fall. <laughs>